Amen. Praise the Lord. Good to see y'all this morning. Come on in the house. I still see them still coming in. That's good. They're still pulling in the parking lot. Yay. We want them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome today to Fellowship Church. I'm Pastor Gary Clark. I'm going to tell you right now, that's a nice coat you got on. That's a nice coat. Hey, come on. Come on, let's go. You and me. Come on, let's go. Where are we going? We're going over here. This is nice. Where did you get that coat? Canada. Wow, I believe it. Now that's Africa. Wow, wow, wow. I did not expect that. That's sort of, that was sort of different. Yeah, good to see you. I love you, buddy. Love you, Louie. God bless you. Well, he won. He won. He won. Somebody got to give him something. He won, definitely. That is the coat of the day. Amen. Yeah. Now, you know, you know your husband went that away. Okay. He's just showing it off. Oh, my gosh. If it's your first time here at Fellowship, you're already wondering, man, this guy is crazy. Good, good. I'm not better than you, okay? I'm, I'm not. I'm about like you. If you're sort of screwed up, good. Join the club. Glad you're here today. Amen. Let's jump up on our feet. Let's have church this morning. Welcome to Fellowship. Again, if it's your first time, and I've met a few already, we love Jesus Christ and we love people. Okay, and in that, in that order, the Lord said, the great command is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. It says mind and strength in another verse or two. And then to love your what? Neighbor as yourself. And so we believe that we're to love him, Jesus. When we started the church years ago, we didn't put we love God because who knows what that is anymore. But uh, God gave his son Jesus Christ. He died on a cross, rose from the dead for our sins. And that's how we get to heaven. That's how we get sins forgiven. So we love Jesus. We love people. If you get those two things down about us, you'll get to know us. Amen. And I want to love the snot out of people. That's what I want to do. You matter. You matter to me. You have value. And uh, I didn't go to church. I never heard anybody talk like this to me, that I mattered being the son of a drunk. I didn't know that. I thought they were better than me. So, and so I'm not better than you. And you're welcome here today. You hear me? And this is going to be a great day for you. If it's your first time, you, I'm guaranteeing you're going to have a great day today. You're going to go, man, I liked that today. And uh, that's, that's a tall order, ain't it? I'm putting it right out there. But I believe that with all my heart. Good crowd today. Had a great crowd in the first service. I thought nobody would come with this winter mess. Amen. It's chilly, won't it, say? But it feels great now, doesn't it? This is great. They warmed it up for us, that first crowd. We got it going on. Are y'all ready? We got the Toboggan Brothers up here. I'm telling you right now. And Joel's sporting a very nice jacket, looking good. And Rod back there got the plaid on. And Brian, Brian got a hat on. You were all bundled up this morning. You still are, aren't you? Is it cold in the cave? A little chilly back there, ain't it? Let's put our hands together. Thank God we live in America. Don't give up on your country. Be strong. Do right. And don't believe lies. You hear me or not, say, do the right thing. Live for the Lord. We live in a great country. We can have church today. Amen. I'm also very thankful. I don't say this often, but we have a great security team here at Fellowship Church. So I just put you on warning. This would not be a place you'd ever want to screw around. You hear me or not? We got, yeah, we got, we got people that are making sure we have church and we can have it safe. Amen. So we're in a safe place today. We're going to have some great church and we're looking forward to it. One more time, let's thank the Lord. We're at church on Sunday in America, baby. Let's go. Come on. Here we go. It's called Waymaker. Joel's going to lead it for us. Here we go. Let's sing the song. Jump on in.
Amen. Praise the Lord with me this morning, guys. Amen. Thank you. Stay standing with me. Come on. We got one more. We're going to switch a gear on you. are going to do an older song. And uh, one I fell in love with, man, probably 20, 25 years ago. It's uh, what the Lord has done in me. It says, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the blind say I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. We can look at the external a lot and not see uh, what God has done in somebody's life. Powerful song, beautiful song. It's a humble song. Would you sing it with us? Let the weak say I am strong. Oh. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Good, good word this morning, guys. Amen. They'll be back in just a bit. Got another special for us, and then uh, another song we'll do together. Let's pray together. Come on. Hang on in here with me. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for loving us, and Lord, I appreciate you loving me, finding me, coming to my house, 109 River Road, Rockingham, North Carolina. Lord, I appreciate it. Appreciate you loving sinners, families that didn't have their act together. And Lord, that's all of us. We all come short of your glory. Lord, we appreciate it. We just want to start our Sunday off saying that, that we love you because you love us. And uh, we appreciate, Lord, these folks here today. Would you bless them, Lord? Lord, they're folks, they're people. And so that means there's there's problems, there's struggles, and there's probably some today that don't have a lot of hope. I mean, they're just looking at their situation, it doesn't look good. Don't know what that might be, but God, would you just help us today as we study your word, as we talk about hope and putting our confidence in you, Lord. I pray that it'll find good ground in our heart today. And Lord, I do pray for folks today. If they die, they don't know they'd go to heaven. They've come, though. They're here. That's fantastic. Lord, I pray that you'd help me. Help me as I talk and speak to them. I pray they'll see they need you, Lord, in their life. And Lord, I pray that you'll touch them today. I pray they'll not leave this place without saying, Jesus, I, I truly believe in you. That's our prayer, Lord. We don't want to have church without you. We don't want this just to be a meeting in the middle of Rotunda. We want this to be church. And for it to be that, Lord, we need you. We need you to show up and touch our heart. And uh, use us today, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be seated if you would. Thank you so much. Mr. Alexander Christie, good to see you, buddy boy. Amen. He's a big-time Buffalo Bills fan right here. I'm talking major, major. This guy's a major. I mean, he has lost four Super Bowls just like the Minnesota Vikings. But this guy right here, I'm telling and he tries to keep it keep it quiet because he thinks if he says too much, it'll jinx him. Oh, and no doubt about it. So you don't see any buffalo on him at all. No, he's scared to put it on. He just is. Amen. It's been so long since there's been something to talk about. You almost feel like a bandwagoner of your own team at this point, getting excited about something good going on. Oh yeah. But you've been at it a long time. Now you you're not a bandwagon jumper owner. No, you're you're a Jim Kelly man. I know it. Bruce Smith. All right, here we go. Alex Chris. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here at Fellowship Church. We're so glad you're here this morning. And if today's your first time here, please do us a favor and fill out that guest registry that's right there in your worship guide. Um, or you can go out to the Welcome Center right after the service and fill out the same basic info over there, and they'll give you a little gift bag with some stuff in it about the church, sunglasses, notepad, pens, some fun stuff too. Um, but we promise not to bother you. We just want to send you a note of thanks for being here this week, and we also like to send you a postcard whenever a big event is going on here at the church. So if you don't mind doing that, please do that this morning. And good morning, everyone online. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. We love and appreciate you. Um, if you're freezing to death up north, we're really sorry, but it's pretty chilly down here today. Not as bad as you guys are dealing with, though, we know. Uh, but do us a favor. Send us a Facebook message or an email um, if you've never done so, and we will get you on that same mailing list. And tonight, tonight, tonight at 6 o'clock, doors are going to open at 5.30. We would love for everyone to come back and, and hear about how to talk to people about Jesus. Uh, Jeff is going to come up here, and he's a super well-spoken, easy-to-understand guy. He's going to have a PowerPoint presentation he's going to be working with. And he's going to help you get some confidence when it comes to telling people about Jesus. We're commanded to tell the world about him. The more people we tell, the more people have opportunities to learn about him and, and get saved and have an eternity in heaven. And he uses us for that. It's that great commission we're told to do. 
So if you're somebody that struggles with that, when you know you feel promptings to talk to somebody, but maybe you don't because you don't feel like you're qualified or you're not a scholar, you don't know your Bible well enough, those are all excuses that we don't have to fall back on. We can have confidence and reach out and love to people, and Jeff wants to help you with that tonight. So come on out. It starts at 6 o'clock. We'd love for everyone to be here. Invite somebody that would like to be a part of this as well, of course. And we'll be doing some light refreshments right afterwards. We just really, really would love everyone to come on out. It's all for free tonight at 6 right here at the church. Lots of Bible studies going on here at Fellowship Church. If you've not plugged into one yet, please do so. Um, and if you have, thank you for doing that. we got huge crowds coming out. They're, they're well, all well attended. You will be blessed. If you haven't done it yet, they're right there in your worship guide as well. Or you can give us a call at the office and we'll fill you in on any details you might need. Speaking of Bible studies, our Wednesday morning Bible study, the second part of Exodus, is going to be starting here in a few weeks, ladies. We'd love for you to sign up today. Uh, Miss Joanne will be out there. You can grab your book. She's got the books already. We'd love for you to plug into this, get that, that second part of Exodus. It's going to be an incredible study um, for something that maybe not everyone here has studied. The, you know, the book of Exodus the, in the Old Testament, not everybody does that. So we would love for you to come on out and get some knowledge here. And on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock, Celebrate Recovery, Fellowship Recovery, every Wednesday right here. Anybody that's struggling with any kind of hurts, any kind of hang-ups, any struggles in their lives, we want to help you get close to Jesus so that he can help you overcome those things. And it begins with an incredible meal out there in the foyer at 6, music, testimony time, time in God's word, and then they break up into small groups all starting at 6.30 right here on Wednesday. And before that, at 4 o'clock, we have our grief share group. For anyone who's going through the pain of losing a loved one, come on out at 4 o'clock and get some strength, get some love, uh, and get some encouragement every single Wednesday here at the church. Women's Prayer Breakfast coming up on Saturday. Ladies, if you haven't signed up yet, please sign up on your way out today. Uh, come on out next Saturday for a great breakfast, great testimony, time in God's Word, fellowship. It's about an hour long, and then you'll have the rest of your day. So come on out next Saturday, please. Also, next Sunday, Blast, our middle school ministry is going to be meeting at the Heegs home. Uh, there, there are youth folks that love the kids. They, they, they told the kids how much they matter. They get into God's Word. They have actual Bible studies with preteens and teenage kids. It's a beautiful thing to see. If you know somebody who would like to be a part of this group, tell them about it. At the Welcome Center, there's little four-by-six cards for you to help um, invite them. The, the Higgs number's on there, their address, all that good stuff. Invite a kid uh, if you could, please. Bridal shower coming up on the 3rd, the first Saturday of the month. Ladies, please sign up on your way out for this also. It's going to be a lot of fun. Just showering love on Miss Mallory, uh, Mitchell's bride-to-be. We just really, really, really would love to every, every lady come on out and just let her know how much you love her. On February the 3rd at 2 o'clock. And then the next day, that Sunday, the first Sunday of February, we have Jerry Sally coming in concert. Awesome chance to invite some folks for some really incredible music right here at the church. And uh, we have starting up in a few weeks. Uh, in a few weeks, we have our fight clubs restarting. Uh, we encourage you to come on out for this, guys. We had a bunch of guys come out last time. It was a huge success. We're going to be doing it again. And if you are a, somebody who wants to be a better a husband, father, uh, just an all-around better man, plug into this great group. It's a men's ministry. Um, and that first Friday on the 9th is going to be at First Christian Church in Venice, and that is at 10 p.m. But it's the only time you got to come out so late. So don't panic thinking that every time you have a meeting, it's at 10 o'clock at night. It's just this first launch on the 9th. And the Browns are coming back. If you guys have not been, have been here uh, long enough to know when the Browns in the past had been here, man, oh, man, they're incredible. Bluegrass, they come up here with all their instruments. It's a lot of fun. Um, if you have been here, some people clap because they're excited to have them back. It's been a few years because of COVID and just life going on. Uh, most of the people that, if you've been here since the beginning at Fellowship Church, the youngest one was about this tall the first time we had him on stage, and now he's got babies of his own. That's how long they've been coming to Fellowship Church. So we just would love for you to come on out. Um, it's going to be on the 11th. And uh, invite your friends, invite your neighbors. It's going to be a great, great concert. That same day, we're going to watch the Buffalo Bills play whoever they're playing. Um, <laughs> at 6 o'clock, right here at the church. You all are welcome to come watch them win. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun that day. We're going to have food out in the foyer, all for free. 
Um, and just, you know, you don't have to sign up or anything. Just come on out. It'll be a great time. you got this big screen TV behind me. You can come and watch the game. And uh, if, you, if you ladies don't care enough, nothing about the game, come anyway. There's folks out there playing board games and all that kind of good stuff, too. It's a lot of fun on the 11th. Come on out, please. And this is huge. On February the 24th, the last Saturday of the month, next month, we are going to be seeing uh, Miss Mallory and Mitchell, our, our band leader here, get married. And you all are welcome. You all are encouraged to come on out. We'd love for you to be here. We want you to be here for this incredible, incredible day as we see these two wed. And uh, we just ask you, if you don't mind, also signing up on your way out if you're going to stay for food afterwards. Because we want to bless you with some food and just keep the celebration going that day. But please don't forget on the 24th at 2.30 to be here for the wedding. <clears throat> and... Pastor Gary's on the radio nearly every day of the week, so check him out on 91.3, our local Christian radio station. And again, we thank you for wearing the shirts, putting the hats on your heads, those bumper stickers on the cars make a big, big difference. I told I was I was in the parking lot of Publix a few times yesterday, and I saw 20, 30% of the cars had a fellowship bumper sticker on them. We thank you for that. We thank you for doing that. It makes a difference. If you haven't done it yet, the bumper stickers are all free out there in the foyer, um, and the shirts and hats are all five bucks. We'd love for you to get the word out and just point people here to Fellowship Church, please. And as always, we thank you for giving at Fellowship Church. We are a debt-free ministry because of you. Uh, Give2FC.com, super easy way to give online. We're able to do stuff for the community and not ever ask for a penny. People ask how much it costs to rent here. We never charge a dime. We never rent. We give the place to people because we want them to be, able, be a part of this community. We want to love them. I uh, met a family here just the other day that's going through a traumatic horrible thing, a painful thing, and man, oh man, it's just to be able to not charge them to use this building, it's an amazing gift for me to be able to say, and it's all because of you, and we thank you for that. We love and appreciate you. God bless you all, and have a great rest of your day. That's a lot of stuff. Amen. And Bible study groups, you see the list is crazy. And there's another one starting up. That's great. But there's several at homes, too. We have several Bible studies at home. They don't make the screen, but they're uh, reaching people in their homes. So uh, it's pretty neat, pretty neat, pretty, pretty important to me that you uh, are in God's Word. And we're not better than somebody else. That's not what it's about. It's about you, you learning and growing. And you'll see in the message today, the more you have the Word of God, the more hope you're going to be able to have in your life. And that's huge, man, because life will throw some stuff at you. Amen? But uh, anyway, one of my favorite songs that y'all do is this song, Dead Man Walking. I just like it. I think it fits, uh, I think it fits you guys. I also, I remember when I first heard it, I was with you guys in Key West. Mm -hmm. We're down there at the Franklin Graham Crusade with Jeremy Camp. And, and it's the first time I would heard this song. It was a newer song that Jeremy Camp had just written and come out with. And uh, it was pretty exciting. And then to have it come back home, you do it. And uh, I love the way you do it. Amen. Just put your heart into it like you do. Knock the snot out of it. You ready? Yes, sir. Amen. Let's tell the band we love them. Dead man walking, coming your way. Freedom was something I never found. Trying to find six feet underground Under the weight of all of my sin Fighting the fight that I couldn't win And you rescued me And now I can breathe I was a dead man walking Till I was a man walking
wonders of your heart And I do not deserve a thing That's just who you are I was a dead man walking Till I was a man Walking with you I was a blind man Falling What a great song. Yeah, man. Good stuff. Let's jump up on our feet, guys, one last time. Come on. You're going to want to get up. Here we go. We're going to sing it a tad bit different, but it's the old song, How Great Thou Art. Amen. I ask you to put your heart into it. Let's sing this song together, and then after this song, we'll have our morning offering. Thank you for giving to the Lord's work in Fellowship Church. We appreciate that. But right now, let's sing one last song. Hey, Dad. Yes, sir. Do you... Remember how the actual chorus of the song goes? Of course I know the actual chorus. Do we get a what's the, what's the key that we're in? Oh Lord, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art Then sings my soul My Savior God to thee How great thou art How great thou art When I think And when I think Come on That God his son not sparing Sent him to die I scarce can take it in That on the cross For my burden gladly bearing Yeah, he bled at night To take away
When Christ shall come we shout of acclamation oh, and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i will bow in humble adoration oh, and they proclaim my god a great thou art that sings my soul my savior My soul, my Savior, God, to me. How great Thou art. How great Thou art. Woo! Wearing us out. Amen. Come on. What a great song, huh? And while, yeah, stay standing with one last little bit. You're going to get to sit down for 30 minutes, all right? Hang on. I don't get to sit down. Anyway, hang on. But no, I like the fact we did the old and we did the new. It was nice. Amen. I like that. Praise the Lord. Thank you again for giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship Church. We appreciate your giving and uh, appreciate your encouragement. And... Uh, Years ago, we started this church, and man, I was trained, I was taught, I preached on, I can guilt people into giving. I mean, I'm telling you, they taught us well. But at Fellowship Church, I've always just been amazed. We started in my house, we had nothing. And there was a humility, I think, that came over our ministry, that we don't have everything we have, He gave us. And we didn't want to screw that up by manipulating our giving. So we do it this way. If you can give cheerfully, we'll receive your gift. If for some reason you can't give it cheerfully, we ask you to hang on to it. And so anything that comes in, it's going to be from folks that wanted to give it. Amen? Also, if you need to pay your bills, especially if you're a single mom, single parent, you need to pay your bills because churches will teach you, you put that in, you get more money by Friday. Well, I teach this. You put that in, you're going to be in the dark on Friday. <laughs> yeah. So we don't do that. <laughs> Amen. Yes or no? Yeah. How many already in your life you feel rich? I am rich. I am blessed. You see what I'm saying? Why do we need to pray, Lord, make me rich if I give money? We're already rich. God, you've blessed me so much. Yes or no? Amen. Anyway, Jeff, come on and pray for us, buddy. I appreciate it. appreciate you serving the Lord with me. The other day, he and his wife, they not only work in seniors, but they actually cooked the meal, man. It was good stuff. We enjoyed it, buddy. Thank you. I got to meet his grandson multiple times. And he's a diehard Green Bay Packer fan. <laughs> and his grandson comes all the way to Florida just to torment me. <laughs> I mean, he'll have shoes or something on just so it'll get in my face. Amen. But I love that you share your family with me. Amen. Anyway, and boy, that was a heartbreaking game yesterday with the Packers. Yes or no? They played hard, man. I was, I was rooting for him, man. I was rooting for him. I couldn't believe I did it. Anyway, that might be the, what done them in. That <laughs> might be what done them in. Anyway, but thank you for giving to the Lord's work here at Fellowship Church. Next week's offering, all of it will go to our brand new uh, facility we're building with a prayer garden, a kid's wing, multiple Bible study classrooms, and stuff like that. But today's offering goes to meet the needs of our ministry. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just so thank you for all the blessings that you do for us in our lives. Wow. But we also know as we pray for that, that we live in a world that tries to tell us what we're supposed to believe. Mm. And we know that you tell us in your word everything yes. that we need for life and to have it more abundantly. So yes. we just ask you, Lord, to touch this body of Christ Amen. all over the world, just like you do in this church, mm. that we take this with us mm. out in the public to the voting booths, yes. to every place we go, that we don't vote the world, we vote your word. Mm. We thank Lord. you so much for this offering. We thank you for blessing it and making it healthy and good for us. We do everything in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen, buddy boy. God bless you, man. Praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all be seated. Amen. Thank you much. You that are watching online, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Would you write us a little note right now? I'll read it in about 45 minutes. 
I'd love that. Just a note of encouragement. Also, thank you for your giving online. Many of you give online, uh, and we appreciate it. Thank you. It, it adds up. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's hard to believe, actually. But thank you for your support from uh, all over the country. We appreciate it. God bless you today. Thank you. If you know it, sing it with me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. You play that verse again, Miss Karen, would you? floods my soul something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole thank the Lord for Miss Karen Everybody serving us. Amen. Thank you so much. Let's go to God's Word this morning. Let's go to God's Word. A message on hope today. Hope. We're in a series. Now, if you're, if you're like, man, I'm sleepy. I've been singing. I'm wrapped up. I'm warm. You need to do something. You need to shake yourself, slap yourself, have family members slap you. I don't care. But the bottom line is let's wake up, set up, get up. Let's do it. Y'all ready or not? Say and if you're here today like, I'm not going to like you, it's your first or second time, I'm just not going to like you, well, you're in trouble because you're going to love me. It's just a matter of time. It is, it is, it is, it is. Come on. Let's go with it. Let's go to God's Word in a series called Vision 2024, but it's really seeing as God sees, seeing as God sees. Now, it sounds like, well, that's crazy. We can, we're not God. We can't see like God sees. You'd be surprised how different you could see. If you get into God's Word, you believe God's Word, you hide God's Word in your heart, you might be surprised how well you're doing in your life, how happy you are, how you see things differently, okay? You're not so negative all the time. Yeah, your family might like you. You just never know, okay? This is huge. It's huge. Seeing as God sees. Otherwise, we see based on our past, our past, abuses we've gone through, struggles we've gone through. And the world will help mark you like that. You know, you've been divorced, so you're divorced. You know what I mean? Like it's a scourge or a plague that's on you. It can be whatever. You can be whatever. You know, uh, I don't know, but there's so many things we could see as. But I know the one thing, this current world we're living in right now, it is pressing us into a mold of depression. You hear me or not? It's awful. Wars everywhere, it seems like. And they tell us we're not at war. We're not at war. You are dropping bombs on people in Yemen. That's called a war. Y'all hear me or not? And I believe we've been at war because I think if we're providing weapons to Ukraine to kill Russians, we're at war. Y'all hear me or not? I know that it's, it's, it's bad. I'm not saying it's not bad. I'm not saying people aren't doing bad things in these other countries. But, guys, this is a mess. Even Saudi Arabia is coming out now, and they're worried. They're not too big of fans of what's going on in Yemen themselves, okay? But 
they're even, even though this is good for them, Saudis, some of them like what's happening. But they're seeing this could spiral out of control. Well, it's already spiraling out of control. It's a mess. That, that's, just, that's just world at war, which is our weapons, much of it. And then some of our weapons are being depleted. But the world's at, in a mess. And what's really crazy, our border. Look at our border. Y'all hearing me or not? So are y'all awake or not? Our border, okay? It's okay if you want millions of people coming across the border. I'm not saying you can't have that view. But don't lie to us and say it ain't happening. It's all under control. It's all under control. No, you're a liar. You're lying to us. Quit lying to us. But our world does that. Y'all hear me or not? The economy. The economy. Yeah. Guys, not everybody has the money. Maybe some of you have, okay? All right? Bottom, I don't know. Bottom line, a lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are struggling. And things are higher, much higher than they used to be. Now, I ain't talking about when you were a child. I'm talking about like three years ago. Remember how it used to be back in the day we paid this? Well, now back in the day was 2021. 2021, whatever. I'm just saying. But so the world can get you down. Okay? A little boy will look in the mirror and he'll see a little girl and they'll say, Yeah, you should be a little girl. Is that true or false? Is that happening? In our country, been legalized in a lot of cities around the country. You can steal it. They don't say it just like that. They say this if it's less than $1,000, we ain't going to arrest you and prosecute you. Well, where I come from, that means I can steal it. <laughs> Amen? Yes or no? Just a mess. No, here's what I'm saying. If you feed yourself this all the time through the news, through the newspaper, it's reality. A lot of this is flat out true. It can screw in your head. Yes or no, amen? And we're called to be salt and light. How can I be salt and light when I'm feeling so depressed or down or this or that, so I'm mad, I'm angry, I'm talking politics all the time? How can I be who I need to be? I got a wife. I got children. I need to do the right thing. I need to bring love into my home, not anger and hate. Yes or no? How do I do it? Well, I need to see as God sees. See, because God has the best what? God has the best vision. I need to have the eyes of the Lord. Okay, I need to be able to see and learn from Him. How can I make it in my life? And then, man, forget about all the hard times and struggles. Just think about your life, your life. There's people in this room, your life sucks right now. Excuse the language. But that's, some of you would, would say that. Some of you say, man, I, I got it hard. I'm going through some hard times right now. It could be my marriage. It could be my kids, grown young'uns, and what you're dealing with. And it's breaking your heart. I don't know. All I know is God has the best vision. God can see the way out of your mess. Y'all hear me or not? Now, this isn't some uh, little fluffy message. Oh, he's going to fluff today. He's going to just wave a wand. Everything's going to get better. No, that ain't real life. Everything that gets better usually in life takes work. Can you say that four-letter word? Work. And so let's work the word. Let's see what the word of God says, and let's see how we can do today. The Bible says, where there's no vision, the people what? Perish. Guys, and that's what's happening. It's what's happening to our country. It seems to be that's the case. Where there's no vision, people perish. But God is speaking here. He's saying, but he that keeps the what? The law, now that's the word of God. That's what that means. When you keep God's word, when you believe God's word, what's those last three words? Happy is he. So the key to happiness is keeping God's word. That's how you can have vision. That's how you can see. I've been building the case on that over the last several weeks. Last week we looked at this verse. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must what? Believe that he is and that he's a what? He's a rewarder as I do what? As I diligently seek him, he's going to help me in my life. And you might not believe that. I don't give a hoot. I'm going to believe it. You hear me, yes or no? I've lived life. I've had hard times, pretty hard times. In case you're coming in today, you don't know nothing about hard times. I'm glad you said that. Meet me after the service. I'll have you crying before you leave, okay? I've had some hard crap, I call it, in my life. But God has been the one that's helped me. He has helped me out of every struggle. The psalmist said, uh, 
Oh, I can't remember. Basically, it's, it's that my suffering or my pain or my struggles have been good for me. And he goes on to say, because it has caused me to know your precepts. Where do we run when we're hurt? We run where? We run to the Lord. Even politicians try to quote scripture when things are bad. It's hilarious. But there's some truth, a lot of truth to that. So why don't we start there? Why don't we put him first in our life before, before the stuff hits the fan? Why don't we start with him? So we're in a series called Vision. If you look up the word vision in a dictionary, Webster Dictionary, it will say several definitions, the ability to see, it'll say several things. But you know one of the definitions is to see supernaturally. That's what Webster says. We have the ability to see supernaturally. Now, does that mean like crystal ball kind of stuff and know the future? No, not talking that. No. And here's my definition. After I've studied multiple definitions, I came up with a definition, I think, that works with the Bible and works with Webster as well. Say it with me out loud. Vision is to see supernaturally. By supernatural means through being apprehended by a supernatural God. That's what's happened in my life. I am not the person I used to be. I don't see with the eyes I used to see with. It's funny. People come to me and their sky is falling. Chicken little people. They come to me with their troubles. And it's amazing. I mean, to them, their world is shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's amazing. I can sit on the other side of my desk, and their world ain't, ain't shot. And the world's not falling because I see through eyes of faith. Do y'all hear me or not? But... When you're not seeing that way, you're just seeing the dirty, the now, the what you're going through. But God, has a, he gives us ability to see things, and he, we can see our way out of trouble. And that's what I want to talk about today. I just want to talk a message about hope. We'll keep pushing, Raj. Seeing what God sees is going to require what? Got it? You've got to have faith. What is faith? It's believing God, period. It's believing his word, period. Well, that ain't what the Bible means. You don't believe the Bible. How about you just keep being depressed and do it your way then? If you're going to do it God's way, he requires you to put your trust in him. It requires faith if I'm going to see what God sees. This is the path. We've been, we're going over a couple of messages I've given. Seeing what God sees has ears to hear. Like even now, if you're cutting me off or online. You think I'm crazy. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. How did that feel? It means I got to listen. I got to listen to God's word. I'm not perfect. I might say something that doesn't line up perfectly with God's word, but I'm going to tell you listen, when I have God's word on this screen, you need to hear it. If you want to see like God wants you to see, you got to have ears to hear. Seeing what God sees is what? It's what? It's believing God. God, you're not a man that you should lie to me. He said, I'll never leave you, Gary. I'll never forsake you, even when other people do. I won't. And guess what? He never has. Gary, you can do all things through Christ, through me, who gives you strength. Guess what I figured out? I can. I ain't saying stupid, stupid stuff. Preachers make up mess. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about living life, man. Okay, when, when mess happens, how can I make it through this? God is there for me and he is with me. Are you okay? I'm just checking on you. All right, you want to see this? All right, well, just sit on hush. Don't make me jump on you. I get security on you. He, he is part of security, so I mean... <laughs> Now, he's actually right there so he can tackle somebody if they mess with me. <laughs> Amen. Come on. Back to the message. Are you all right? We take commercials at this church. <laughs> Let's go. Here we go. Seeing what God sees said out loud is believing even though you can't see. Just testimony time. How many of you were in a world of hurt? Somewhere in your life, it was bad. I'm not talking about a little bad. I'm talking about it was bad. And you couldn't see your way through it, but you made it through all that, whatever that was. Can I see some hands? I did it. I did it. This is true, man. What I'm telling you is the truth. But we need to live this way. 
We need to be these kind of people. So, seeing what God sees is what? Now, this is the ugly word. It's what? Diligently. Diligently. That's a, that's a nasty word today, to do something diligently. But that's what God's word says. If you want to see what I see, if you want to live the life that you can live, if you want to, when bad things happen or the world is going to hell in a handbasket around you, you can still smile. You can have a testimony. You can be positive. You can love. You can make a difference in somebody's world. You're going to have to diligently seek him. But this is absolutely possible in what God wants for you in your life. A clear vision, my words, with the courage and commitment to follow through will lead to a fantastic finish. A clear vision, here's two words though, with the what? Courage and what? Commitment. Commitment to follow through. It will lead to a fantastic finish. God wants you to see as he sees. See, God, do you think, do you think God's sitting in heaven wringing his hands? Say, about our country, yes or no? Oh, poor America. Is he doing that? Now, if you know your Bible, the Bible actually says the king Sits in heaven, if you know the scripture, sit with me, and he what? He what? Laughs. Some of you said it. He laughs. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to see like he sees? Wouldn't it be nice to have some humor when everything else looks like it's going, going crazy? God sits in the heavens and laughs. That doesn't mean he doesn't care. That especially means when people try to uh, go against him. People try to have their own way, do it their own way. Are you kidding me? It's not happening. He sits in the heavens and laughs. So God has the best vision. Keep pushing me, Roger. I appreciate you. Today's message, here we go. Are y'all ready or not? Here we go. Please, please be ready because I'm ready. If there was anything that changed my life that helped me, it would be a message like today. The power of hope. The power of hope. When I talk about growing up the son of a drunk from 109 River Road, Rockingham, I don't say that for you to feel sorry for me. I say that so you'll see what a great God I have. My dad had a 7th grade education. My mother, 11th grade education. My mother left my daddy when I was 11 years old. I was the youngest. She brought a man in the house. A man having sex with my mother. I don't even know this man. This is hard on a kid. All my other brothers were grown and gone and sisters grown and gone. It was me. I went through some stuff, okay? But the bottom line is... God saved me. God changed me. I'm not angry at God. That man later, my mother married that man. That man later shot and killed my mother. Okay, but you're not looking at somebody today who doesn't have hope. I'm actually a hope giver. You hear me, yes or no? People come to see me for hope. <laughs> How can that happen, man? And I'm a Vikings fan. This is impossible. <laughs> it's crazy. The bottom line is, it's what the Lord has done in me. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the blind say, I can see. It's what the Lord has done in me. Amen? And this is the message I'm giving today. It's a message on hope. Let's look at the power of hope. Now, we're going we're gonna to do a little Bible study. Here we go. This isn't just Gary talking. I love this verse right here. One of my favorites. It's sort of a weird one. But look at this verse. We are saved by hope. But hope that is seen ain't hope. For what a man sees, why does he hope for it? For if we hope for that which we can't see, then we do with what? Patience. Wait for it. Now that's a little bit of convoluted verse right there. But the bottom line is churches today, a lot of them, put on a show. Now we had great music. This wasn't a show. This was people that are talented leading us in worship. But, I mean, churches put on a show. Let the preacher touch you and heal you. And people get, ah, yeah, wow, woo. But they can't do it at the hospital. How's that work? Y'all hear me or not? Say. Okay, and a lot of people, that's how they get their faith, from high to high to high to high to high. They go to church, get them a high. They go see them a little miracle. They travel. They go, listen, listen, that's not how you get hope. Hope comes by faith. Hope comes by believing God's word. Hope comes even if things look bad. I still have hope because I have him. If I don't have two nickels to rub together, I'm still good.
Listen, we're saved by hope. But you don't see hope. You don't see hope. For what a man sees, why is he hoping for it? For if we hope for that which we see not, then we'll with what? We'll with patience wait for it. I've never seen heaven. But I'm as sure of heaven as I'm sure of you being here today. My mama's in heaven. When she was shot, boom, absent from the body, immediately present with the Lord. Coach Southwell was here this morning. I love Coach. I love his family. His dad passed away this week. I knew his daddy well. A funny man. When they made him, they broke the mold. God broke the mold when they made uh, Coach Southwell's dad, Don Sr. He passed away this week. Well, Don, he was right there at the second level sing, uh, sitting there this morning. And I talked to him just like this from the stage. Don, your daddy's in heaven. You know what Don says? He knows he is. He believes he is. I don't, I don't hope like maybe so. No, hope is a confident expectation that he's in heaven. Am I lost you or not? Say. When you're a believer in Christ, absent from the body, you are what? Present with the Lord. Where would you hear that at? A cereal box or the Word of God? That's powerful, man. Here's what I think of when a person dies. Boom. Mom was shot. Then here's what happened. Just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it celestial, of waking up in glory and finding it home. I'm home, man. That's what faith will do for you. Did I lose you or not? I love this scripture. Who by him do believe in God that raised him, that's Jesus, from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and what? Hope might be in God. This is a message on hope. It's coming. It's rolling now. I love this scripture. These are powerful scriptures that's changed my life. This is one of the craziest scriptures in the Bible that I grabbed onto when I was, in hurt, when I was hurting. Here it is. Because I'm alive, I can have hope. Say that out loud. Because I'm what? I can have what? Now, some of you, I'm, you're, I'm making you mad. I'm making you mad because you want to stay in your pit. You don't understand. I'm not minimi minimalizing what you're going through, but I am trying to give you another perspective. You ain't dead yet, okay? Even though what you're going through seems to be killing you, it ain't. And because you're alive, you can have what? Now, I'm alive. I can be depressed, too. I'm alive. I'm going to be depressed. Go get drunk. Go smoke some stuff. That's an option. But that's not God's option. That's not seeing like God sees. Amen? But because I'm alive, I can have hope. Now, here's one of my favorite verses. Here it is. Pop it up, Raj. For to him that's joined to the living, there is what? Here's plain English. If you alive... There is what? If you alive, there is what? You say, I got cancer. Are you alive? Then be hopeful. Confidently believe that God has got you. Go to the doctors. Get help. Great. But confidently believe, regardless, my God has me. You see how hope works? If you're alive, you can have hope. If you're alive, you can have hope. And I, this is my favorite part. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. How many have ever heard me use this scripture? You've heard me a few of you. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. I, I give it to the football team all the time. I would love to give this to the Minnesota Vikings. <laughs> a living dog is better than a dead lion. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Here's what it means to me. If you're alive, you can have hope. If you feel like a dog, if you feel like a living dog, I mean, you have been kicked, you have been hit, you got fleas, you mangy, you ain't even got all your teeth. I mean, it's bad. And you don't see how you're going to make it. Listen, better is that person who is like that. A living dog's better than a dead lion. What does that mean? I see that if you have life, if you have some breath in you, you can still have hope.
don't give up hope. Don't quit hoping. I see that old dog, that old mangy, nasty dog, scrawny, his ribs are showing. How many ever felt like that before? I mean, this was you. This was you. Man, I ain't, I am this. And you, I see this old dog, he's over there sniffing, walking around that dead lion. The lion's mane is beautiful, but that sucker is dead. He can't do nothing. The lion looks good, king of the jungle, dog like. Listen, as long as you can do a little something, you can have hope. Did you hear me? Better's a living dog than a dead what? I love that scripture. I hope you love it too. Hope's what we're talking about. There's power in hope. What is spirit-filled hope? Spirit-filled hope, say it out loud, is not a hope so, maybe so, who knows, kind of so-so hope. That's what the world says. Well, I hope so. Hope it don't rain. Hope they don't come over like they said they were. Hope we're not eating there. Hope he gets done early. <laughs> that is not Bible hope. That is not, that's not what the word hope in the Bible means. So what is, what is hope in the Bible? Say it with me. Spirit-filled hope is confident and believing. That's why you need to put your faith in God's Word, not a preacher. Put your faith in God's Word, not in a church where they put on a show. Guys, life is too hard to screw this up. Don't screw it up. Your hope is in Jesus Christ. My hope is in the Word of the living God. Let God be true again, the Scripture, and every man a what? A liar. Put your hope. This is hope is seeing what God sees. And if you're going to see what God sees, you got to believe what God says. If you're going to if you're going to see what God sees, you got to believe what God what says. You got to believe that. That's what I do. Hope literally means say it with me, expecting with confidence. As sure as I'm alive today, I believe my mother right now is watching me preach. I believe she is cheering me on. I think she's saying, he is really, really good. <laughs> I, she might even say, he's my favorite preacher other than Billy Graham. <laughs> and Billy's right next to her. You know? But this is how I see. Do y'all hear me or not? Call me crazy. Better is a living dog than a dead lion. You that don't believe anything, man, I, hey, I choose to believe. I'm alive, baby. You hear me? I want to see what God sees. Keep looking. My confidence is in, say it with me, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Keep looking. My confidence is in God's Word, the Bible. My confidence is in the promises of God. Does that sound like the evening news? Do you see how different this life is? How different our thinking can be? Are y'all hearing me or not? Hope! Hope! These are God's promises. I'm going to give you some of them. Promises that God made to me. And I'm letting you just peek in here. Be of good courage, Gary. He shall strengthen your heart, all you that what? Hope in the Lord. Hope in the Lord. My confidence is not in what I see, my circumstances, my surroundings. Because my circumstances and surroundings might look like I can't make it. But with God, all things are possible. I can make it. How many there was a time in your life, I'm talking about really, 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 and everybody, 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 thought there was no way you were going to make it. Can I see any hands that would say, everybody, everybody. Pretty exciting, huh? Pretty amazing. Why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Say it with me. Hope in God. 
confidently expect and believe in Him, for I shall yet praise Him. What happens in bad situations when I have hope in the Lord? Here's what happens. He can give me health. Depression is not good. It can give me help of my what? What's that word? Countenance. When you have hope, it can change your face. There can be a brightness that can come in your eyes to a person who has hope. Is that true or false? It is true. My mother was that kind of person. She was suffering at home, going through all kinds of abuse that I didn't even know about. But she would still walk into a room and light it up. Her smile, her eyes. God, when you hope in Him, He can change your face, man. And I, a lot of people, when they go through a, a divorce, especially when you've been hurt, when somebody's left you like a dog, and you feel like that mangy dog, <laughs> and then you try to get out again and maybe try to find somebody else, it's hard. I mean, I tell you, this is hard. I'm going to tell you. But... <laughs> It's really hard when you have no hope. Yes or no? You can put all the makeup on you want. But if you are hopeless and you are depressed and you're down and you think your face ain't showing it, we can see it on your face. So can he or she. Amen. It's huge. The Lord takes pleasure in them that what? Fear Him, that reverence Him, that believe Him, that humble themselves at His feet. He takes pleasure in us. In those that do what? Hope in His what? Mercy. The word mercy means price paid. Jesus died on a cross. He loves me. He rose from the dead. I have my name written in the Lamb's book of life. God is merciful to me, a sinner. I can make it through anything. He's on my side. Y'all hear me? I'm killing you, aren't I? Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you know that? So-and-so don't like me. Well, get over it. He likes me. He loves me. By whom also we have access by what? Faith. Into this grace wherein we stand. And we rejoice in what? Hope is all through the Bible. So I know it's a toughie today, I guess. Not tough on me, I like it. Hope makes us not what? I've said it before, going through a divorce for me personally was hard. Even though I was hurt and I was the one left, it's funny how I'm the one that felt dirty. I'm the one that felt like garbage. You hear me, yes or no? What helped me hold my head up? What helped me keep going? What helped me keep pastoring? You know what helped me? Verses like this. My confidence in Jesus Christ, my hope in Jesus Christ, makes me not ashamed. He knows me. He knows my heart. He loves me. And if others don't, that's on them. And I'm not going to see myself through other people's eyes. I'm going to see myself through his eyes the way he sees me. Y'all hear me or not? How many relate to that? Can I see some hands? How many relate to what I just said? And you get it. Good. If it's just half the crowd, fantastic. Because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us. For while we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for us. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, per adventure even for a good man will some even dare to die. Say verse 8 with me. But God commended his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Well, that can change everything. You hear me or not? Well, they're not talking to me. Well, he's waiting for you to talk to him. He loves you. Getting it or not? I'm trying to drive this wagon home. The power of hope. Last part of this message. Just several verses. Hope will lift you up. Hope will lift you. In a world like we're seeing, do you believe this world? Are you seriously thinking you're going to fix this country if you just get the election right? Right? 
It's crazy. Guys, we need the Lord, man. And so much of what Washington does, and some of it ain't too hot. A lot of times, some of the economy and stuff, it does affect my life. I get that. But so much of what I go through is what I'm going through and don't have a thing to do with them. I need the Lord. I can't wait for, for some gravy train to come in. I need the Lord, man, in my life. I got him, by the way. Yes or no, amen. I got him. Don't make me better than you. It just means I've stepped up. I want it. Hope lifts me up. Now the God of hope fill you. The God of hope. What's that word hope? Confidently expecting. Confidently believing that everything he said is true. This God of hope. This God of truth. This God who cannot lie. This God who you put your confidence in. Fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. That you may be more and more confident in expecting great things in your life through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hope lifts me up. I love hope. Yes or no? Have you heard a, a similar theme all the way through? Our hope is in Jesus Christ. Pastors who preach messages on hope are nice. I like them. They're nice people. But hope is found in Jesus Christ. Did you hear me today? And in His Word. That's where it comes from. Larry, you've been struggling. Where are you getting your hope from, buddy? Has the Word been helpful to you, Larry? And he has serious cancer. Now, I can call on him like that because I know he and his wife are solid believers in Christ. Doesn't mean they're not hurting. Doesn't mean they don't, don't suffer in life. But that doesn't take our hope away. Amen? That's what we need to survive. Y'all hear me? How many right now in this room, just would you be honest with me? Do you mind? You would say, Pastor Gary, I, I, I'm really in need right now of hope in my life. Anybody want to raise some hands? Just let me see you. I need hope in my life, Pastor. I need hope right now. This is how you get it. You hear me or not? You're in a good place today. I want you to get this. Hope lifts me up. The love chapter. Love bears all things. Love believes all things. And love what? Confidently expects and believes all things are going to be good. I'm going to make it. No matter what it is. If I don't make it through this, I'll see him on the other side. Amen. Hope. Hope holds me down. So hope lifts me up, but hope holds me down. What do I mean? By two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, we have a strong consolation. We fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that's set before us. God can't lie. So when you put your confidence in him, you have an anchor. You have an anchor. That's what this next scripture says. Say it with me. Which hope we have as a what? Anchor. Of the soul. Don't put your confidence in a church and a preacher. Put your confidence in Jesus Christ and the Word of God. Do you hear me? Sounds like I'm kicking my own feet out from under me when I say that. Good. Don't put your confidence in me. I still confess sin. I still struggle. You need him who's defeated sin. He'll help you, man. So hope holds me down. It's my anchor. Amen. Keep going, Raj. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, that his name is who? Jesus Christ. Hope holds me down. We're almost done, buddy. Thank you. Hope will do when I'm what? What's going to happen then? Some of you are going to die an early death because you're so depressed. You're going to die an early death because you got it all figured out and they're not doing it your way. You need to put your hope in the Lord, guys. The hope of the righteous shall be what? Gladness. But the expectation of the wicked shall what? We have hope in this life, and we have hope in life, the life after this life. Our hope's in the Lord. Here's another one. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous, we have what? We have what? Hope. Confidence in our what? In our death. Amen? But I'd not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those which are asleep or those who have died. 
that you sorrow not as others do which have no what? When people die that know the Lord, we sorrow. But that doesn't take away our what? Our hope. Never give up hope. Never give up hope. Do I look like I've given up on hope? Yes or no? You're looking at a guy with problems. You're looking at a guy. I'm married. I have children. Older ones, I've got younger ones. I've got a church. I've got life too. I'm not better than you. I'm just trying to tell you what it is that keeps Gary afloat. It's called hope. <laughs> That'd be a good t shirt. Don't ever give up hope, but I will hope continually and will yet praise him more and more. Don't ever give up hope. Gird up your loins of your mind. Be sober. And isn't it interesting? What does it say? And what? Hope how long? To the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation or the return or the appearing of Jesus Christ. Never give up hope. But thanks be to God, which gives us the what? Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Let me tell you what's been happening. I quit now. Whole message I've been preaching, I've been getting attacked up here in my mind. Like you're not listening. Gary, it don't do any good what you're saying. I call that bull crap. A lie from Satan. This is a good message. You ought to take it to heart. It could change your life. This message could be the very thing that would set you on a path you didn't even believe you could have. I would grab on to this message today. I would grab on with both hands to Jesus Christ. And his word. <laughs> I'd let everything else go by the wayside. That's how much I believe in this word today. I will hope in the Lord. Would you say it with me? I will hope in the Lord. I will hope in the Lord. Because I have what? Because I have ears that are hearing. Because I believe God's promises are true. Because I don't have to see to believe. I believe to see. I'll have hope in the Lord because I diligently seek God. And he's going to bless me because I'm going to trust him in all of my ways. And he's going to direct my path. Let's thank, his, thank the Lord for his word today. We quit. Amen. Come on. Praise the Lord. Woo! Amen. Let's stand on up. Now you know what a preacher goes through. We hear voices. How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> we hear voices. And they're not always good. Which tells me Satan hates this message. He hates a message on hope. I mean, I see him cowering right now at a message like this today. You hear me or not? Don't give up hope. Powerful message. Okay? Even if you didn't think so. If you didn't think so, go home and listen to it again. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. We thank you. Lord, I can still remember growing up in a home without hope. I never heard messages or verses and anything about God or about the Bible. It was go to work, come home, get drunk. Lord, I thank you for interrupting my life. I thank you for rescuing me. I thank you for the kind of reckless love it looks like that you have for people. You go in dark places and you snatch them out. Lord, I thank you for doing that for me. Nobody could have had a better life with you, Lord, than I've had. You've blessed me, Lord. You've let me love these people and they've loved me. <laughs> what a life. Forgive me, Lord, when my hope has been in myself or my hope has been void and wasn't there because of my circumstance. But, Lord, I thank you for putting up with me. 
never leaving me nor forsaking me. Getting down in the pit and the mess with me and wallowing and helping me out of it, Lord. I appreciate it. Bless this message to my heart. I want it, Lord. This is for me today. But, Lord, I pray you'll bless it to the folk as well. Thank you, Lord. Our hope, our confidence, our faith is in you, Jesus. We love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. With heads bowed, one last moment. In case you're new to us, I don't want folks to leave lost. You've heard repeatedly today that the answer to everything is Jesus Christ. There is no way you can go to heaven without putting your faith in Jesus Christ. I'll quote you one scripture. He that has the Son has life. But he that doesn't have the Son of God doesn't have life. You must put your faith in Christ. Can I lead you in a prayer right now where you reject all other ways and say yes to Jesus Christ? Not a church, not yourself, but Him. Him. Would you put your faith in Him today and be saved? Can I lead you in that prayer now? Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I can't make it to heaven on my own. But Lord, I can because of you. So, Lord, I put my faith in you today. You are my hope. You are my hope. You are my hope. I don't, have to go to he- I don't have to go to hell. I ain't going. Because, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you're God's only son. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you rose from the dead. And I believe you love me. Did you talk to him like that? I believe in you, Lord. Not a church. Not myself. But in you, Jesus. Save me today. Write my name down in that book called the Lamb's Book of Life where I'll never perish in Jesus' name. With heads bowed, how many would say, Pastor Gary, I said that prayer with you. I meant it, Pastor. I said that. Can I see your hand? That's a tough one, wasn't it? Good. See your hand? Bunch of you. Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's where our hope comes from. Amen. Miss Karen, you're playing a song. I normally don't do this. Okay, is it My Hope is Built? I don't know if you know this song. We don't normally do this. Let's do it. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand All other ground is sinking sand All other ground is sinking sand Let's thank the Lord for a good day at church. Amen. Go get them. Boom. Charge hell with a water pistol. Go get them. Amen. See you later, guys. God bless you. Hope. It ain't ho, ho, ho. It's hope, hope, hope. Amen. You got it? Come on, baby.